Well, hello and welcome to MTTC 107, Mill Lab number four. Uh, today we're going to be doing this part right over here. Uh, this is a metric lab, so everything, all these dimensions are in metrics. Uh, we're going to go ahead and I'll teach you some various things uh, as far as metric goes and we'll do conversions and things like that. It's not a big deal. You've already done some of it before anyway. Remember the magic number, 25.4. All right, so uh, what we got here is I got a two view drawing. I got a top view here, and of course I got a front view. Um, so uh, what we're gonna do this time is we're going to mill the outside contour. We're going to, and we're gonna do this in several passes. Now, uh, I think I'll just do it in two depth passes, so we'll talk more about that. We're also gonna leave stock for a finish pass. So we're gonna take two depth passes leaving 20 thousandths per side and then on all surfaces in X and Y and then we're going to take uh, uh, a final pass at full depth to full part geometry. So we're going to show you. We're going to use what's known as the diameter uh, offset method which is a pretty simple little way of doing it. We're going to use cutter comp to actually leave the stock on there because trying to add you know, stock to this and figuring out how much that is, that is just a real pain in the butt. Your uh, numbers over here on your uh, your uh, program come out looking really weird and so uh, the diameter situation is really good. So we're going to use, like I said, the diameter offset method, which everybody will understand that. Uh, most people do that anyway. It's a pretty popular way of doing it. Um, so let's start talking a little bit about uh, the uh, the part here and get out of the get out of that I gotta clip oh see that's the problem with this thing there we go bear with me a second there we go okay I'm gonna do this All right, back to that. Yeah, what I wanted to do was hit escape. There we go. That's what I want to do is get rid of that magnifying glass. So maybe I'll cut that out. We'll see if we can't edit it. All right, move this over just a little bit more there. Okay, so let's talk about where our points are first off. We're going to start here. X0 and Y0 are going to be in the lower left-hand corner right here at the intersection of these two lines. Uh, so let's go ahead and Z0 of course is going to be on the top of the part uh, again if somebody else is watching this from some other place you know this is just really for this class so uh, hopefully if it helps you it does if it doesn't it doesn't all right it's probably take about 40 minutes I'm gonna do this in two sessions and then I'll edit it myself so without saying any more with that let's go with our points so right here that's gonna be point number one point number two point number three point number four point number five, point number six, point number seven, point number eight. Okay, so we have eight points on the outside contour. All right, now on the island, which is this here right here, the island right here, let's go ahead and say this is going to be point number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now those are going to be, there are twelve points on that on the contour. Now since we had eight I'm going to redo that again. So let's start all over again. So this is actually going to be instead of, I was telling you there were 12 points on We're going to number them correctly this time because there were eight in here. So this is going to be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and then finally 20. Now the holes are going to be 21, 22, 23, 24. I'm really not going to put down the numbers over here for the holes, okay? Because the holes are simple. Uh, what you can see, we'll talk about the holes real quick. These are 12.7. That's a half inch. They're all the way through, so we do have to compensate for the tip of the drill. Uh, these chamfers right here, okay, they're going to be 12 millimeter by 45 degrees, so it's going to be 12, meter, 12 millimeters from here, 
okay from here over to there so basically if I were to draw a triangle like this what I'm trying to draw here is a triangle this leg would be 12 millimeters and this leg would be 12 millimeters typical means that all four are the same okay so this one's 12 millimeters this is 12 this is 12 this is 12 now by 45 degrees uh, we do have a little uh, uh, concave radius here if you will and it's a 12.5 millimeter and it's typical again so this one and this one are both 12.5 all right so let's get this back here i'll go over the points one more time all right so again we're gonna this is gonna be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and of course it'll be 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, so those are our points. All right, having done all that and said all that, let's go back over here and look at this. Of course, we've got our all this stuff going on. I'm not going to talk about the safety line, all this startup stuff right here. Uh, we are going to program, I believe, five tools in this particular uh, this particular uh, lab. So we get right down to here. This is pretty much all the startup. Uh, notice that one thing that has changed here in the safety line is since I'm in metric, I now have a G21 instead of a G20. All right, so that's a big thing right there. Uh, if, now, most controls are also, well, like, ask you, are you sure you want to program in metric and things like that? Or you may have to change a setting. On the host controls, you definitely at settings 9, you go down and say, okay, we're going to work in inch or metric, whatever, and it'll tell you. So, but you still have to have that G21 up there, so change that. Uh, all right, so the first tool we're going to use here, let's come on over here and look at it. We're going to use a 3 8 2 flute end mill. All right, now that's just one. I, is that the best choice? Probably not, but I know that it'll work real well in here, and, and it's just the way I had the lab set up. If you go back up here, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's up in here. Yep. You're going, why is that like that? That's because I have to rotate this so that we can see it. When you rotate one part of the document, rotate the other. Bottom line, that's what we're going to use is that 3 8 2 fluid end mill. So I've already calculated up the RPM for that. Uh, I used the cutting speed of 120. I believe the lab says 325. I'm, that's what I use. So I used 120 as a cutting speed. In this case, for the drills, I used 70. So... All right, so we got our tool change. We're changing right there to tool one. Remember the T number and the H number both have to be the same. Uh, G43, and I'm moving Z. Now this right here is a mistake. That's better. I hit Control S because that what would have, in a lot of in a lot of controls that would have given me an error that gap there. Uh, so this 101.6. You're looking at that and saying 101.6. What the heck is that? Well, that's four inches. So what I've done is uh, we're moving Z to four inches above the part, but of course everything has to be in metric. So you're going, oh God, really? Just trust me. Just make it 101.6. Remember four times 25.4. Check it out. You get that. Remember your H number to activate your tool length offset have to has to always match your tool number. Okay. So then I've wrapped it to X zero Y zero, which is going to be right there. I'm down here on the drawing now, X, X, X0, Y0, and Z is at 2.54. You're going, what's that? Well, that's the metric equivalent of 100 thousandths, and I'm turning my coolant on. Now, since I'm using 3 eighths, I want to move off. Remember, we always have to move off uh, to a safe start position that is at least greater than the radius of the cutter. Uh, half of 3 eighths is 3 sixteenths. All you got to do is double the bottom number. The only easy thing about fractions is that. So 3 sixteenths is 187 thousandths. I rounded it to two something. Anyway, I come up with this five millimeters being just fine. That's my safe start right there. All right. That ought to be great. Okay. Now, once we moved into that position, I am bringing Z down. Now, this time you'll notice I'm going to go over here to the part. Now the part's 25.4 inches, that's one inch, so the part's one inch thick. I am not going to take this all in one pass. So I'm only going to take first, my first depth pass is going to be 12.7 millimeters. I'm just going to take half of it. All right. Now is this realistic? No, but for demonstration purposes, you know, I, for the 3 8 end mill and not knowing how much stock I would have and things like that, I might even take three passes. But 
with copy and paste it's really easy to add additional passes once you get the first geometry all down I did calculate up all my mill feed and that's up there you, you can you know how to do that just remember just do it like you normally do it for uh, inches you know I give you feed per tooth and yeah and you take that you know times the number of teeth and then take that times the RPM and that'll give it to you in inches per minute to convert that feed to millimeters you're gonna just take whatever your answer you did get there and multiply it times 25.4 and you end up with some what looks like really ridiculous feeds I uh, remember a millimeter is much smaller than an inch so uh, 150 point 152.4 uh, millimeters per minute is, is not really that fast all right so that's how we do that notice I am going to leave it modal the whole time I'm not going to keep putting that up there because these are starting to get more involved so we're going to start talking about you know optimizing our programs and you know I did put some other stuff up here just to that's unnecessary like all these zeros right here we don't need them but I put them on there later on on the next one uh, I'm, going be, I'm going to start optimizing program and just put the least amount of stuff on there that I can because this one took me about two and a half hours to do all right so there you go so i brought z down half okay half the depth and there's the feed i figured out then we comp over cutter comp left because we're going to climb mill we always climb mill and remember the d1 now interesting because of this d1 you said something about leaving stock Randall didn't you yes I did we're gonna leave stock I'm gonna leave 20 thousandths on all of these surfaces here all of them okay in the X and the Y so that I can take that as a finish pass now how am I gonna accomplish that well like I said I'm gonna use the diameter offset method which means what I will do is remember this D1 right here when the control reads that line of code it's gonna go look at the D1 and it's gonna say okay it's gonna go into the tool geometry page and it's going to use whatever diameter now you told it in its cutter comp calculations. Now, if you put in 3 eighths would have been 0.375. I, I could really quickly do whatever that was in, uh, in, uh, well, let's just do it. So, so, so if I take 0.375 and we remember we're working in metric 25.4, there we go. So, uh, the metric equivalency of 3 eighths is 9.525 millimeters. All right. Now, what we would do is this. Let me show you. To fool this machine into thinking and leaving 20 thousandths, and that's what we're trying to do. I'll clear that. What I'm going to do is I am going to tell it that the cutter is actually bigger than it is. Now, let's say we used, honest to God, on size, 3 eighths mls, 375 thousandths, brand new out of the box. If I want to leave 20 thousandths per side here, 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 and on all these surfaces, Okay, if I want to leave that 20 thousandths and I do, I'm going to tell it that it's actually 40 thousandths larger than it is. That's right. So whatever stock you want to leave, you double that. So if I take 0 0.375 and plus 0 0.04, okay, that equals that 415. So now I would, of course, then multiply that times 25.4 because it's in metric, and you've got to also calculate. You've got to put your tool geometry in metric. So I would tell it that we were actually using a 10.541 millimeter, okay, uh, in mil in this case. And that would keep us 10, that would keep us 20 thousandths away. Now later on, we're going to change that. You'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, close I'll just close that out so that's how the diameter offset works basically we're just gonna lie to the machine we're gonna tell it the cutters bigger than it actually is you know by twice the amount of stock we want to leave if I wanted to leave 30 thousandths per side I would say okay add, you know 60 thousandths to the dime the actual diameter of the cutter and put that right there in the d1 in the tool geometry page and it does it all for you it's magic it works really great okay so the rest of this stuff right here I'm gonna go through this pretty quick because there's a lot to go over here uh, you know these are just me moving to the different points I start out remember we comped over always make that comp move over okay then the next one I went to point two remember this was point two right here so I went up there to point two which let me do something here yeah okay control s there so I went to point two and then basically I'm just going to point three 
then a point four. Now a point four to point five, that's an that's an arc, right? Right there. So because we got one. Excuse me, here let's do this again. Sorry. One, two, we're on the outside. Screwed that up. I'm not gonna edit that out. But we're gonna go back up here. So we got a basically we've got us a, a radius right here. Okay. So if you look right here between that point right there, we got a GO2. So I GO2 because that is a radius clockwise, right? Yep. Then GO1 to there, GO2 to there, GO1 to there, GO2 to there, GO1 to there, GO2 to there. And that puts me all the way back down to basically, okay, I'm getting back to position one, which I said that was position one, so we, we arced right to position one. That particular time I comped off, see? Got right there, comp off in X axis. All right, G01, G40, comped it off. And then comped, turned it, turned it off in X, then I turned it off in Y. All right, now, here's something you gotta understand. A lot of people, what they don't wanna do is they don't wanna turn the cutter between the G41 and the G40. You can't make any Z moves, you cannot. If you, try, if you move the z-axis on most of the controls, you'll get all kinds of goofy stuff. The best thing is to keep nothing but X, Y, and maybe M, any M codes that you might need in there. But that's it. X, Y's, your R's, your R values, things like that. Don't put anything else. So I had to turn it back off, move to my safe start, then brought Z down. Now that's the whole thickness of the part plus 20 thousandths. It converted to metric, of course. Yay. So Z came back down. Now what I did was, after I got this all done, right from here to here, I just copied that and pasted it back down here, changed my Z value, okay? I just pasted it right here and changed my Z value to the depth, so I'm taking another pass, okay? It goes all the way around that and does that. Notice the coolant is still on, so yes, the coolant didn't turn off. I didn't turn off the spindle. Basically, Z just moved off to the safe spot. Z came down, and then it comps back over, and it does all that outside again. Okay, that's great. We go through points three, point four. Once again, let's just do it. You know, we G01 from there to there, G02 from there to there, G01 from there to there, G02 from there to there, G02 or G01 from there to there, G02 from there to there, G01 from there to there, G02 from there to there. All right, and then I comp off. And I I'll comp off at X, back to my safe start. That G40 is very important. Remember, no Z moves in between the G41 and the G40. I got all these line numbers all nice and sequenced for you, you know. So, you can take a look. Um, what's going on there is we comped off in X, we comped off in Y. Now, at this particular point, okay, you're going... You, you, you brought Z back down again. Well, I really, just because I copied it, I copy and pasted everything from here, from line N300, all the way down to here. And I just pasted it again. So, this time, if you look, you're saying, well, you want 25.4. So, that's really not good enough for me because that's, you know, that's, yeah, I, I need to go deeper than that, so I'm going to go back and change that real quick to 0.146. That's 20 thousandths deeper. Hit Control S and save that. Okay, using the same feed rate. Now this time I'm going to take my third pass. So let's make sure we understand this. Here's our first pass right here. Right here. There's our first pass. Here's our second pass. We're leaving stock, so we left 20 thousandths per side, 20 thousandths per side, and now we're down here at the third pass. So I brought Z down. Let's go back down here. Here we're at the third pass. I'll bring this up here so you can see it. So right here's my third pass. All right, let's bring D Z down. Again, 20 thousandths, comped over, did everything the same. None of this has changed. That's why if you, once you get your geometry good, all you have to do is paste. You don't have to put all this stuff back in here. Now, the thing that I did change is that. What? Yeah, I put a D2 there. Now, see, that's totally allowed. That D number does not have to match the tool number. And what I did, what I'm going to do now is, since this is my finished pass, this last pass, starting at uh, line 420 and ending at line 540, okay, all right, that last pass, I want to actually do with a, 
with the real size cutter. So what it's going to do is that it'll go into the control, into the tool geometry page, and I'm going to tell it that this particular cutter is actually 0.375 converted to, uh, to again, metric. 0.375 times 25.4 equals, so I'm going to put in that it's 9.525 it tool number two. I'm going to tell it that's the diameter. Let's say that, and whatever the actual diameter of the end mill is, that's what I would use. Convert it to metric, stick it in there, and then it's going to take that finished pass, and it'll take off those extra 20 thousandths that we left all the way around there. So that's how you do that. So you copy and paste, and we just change a few things. Now, once I've done all of that, okay, that particular outside should be done. Uh, very last line, of course, let's make sure we understand that because you didn't see that in the other ones. G28, that sends the machine home. Notice that I have a Z101.6 and an M09. Now, if you go over here, I got it, Z home, Z to 101.6 first, and then I'm turning the coolant off. Now, what that's going to do is, first, Z is going to come up to four inches above the part converted to metric. Then it, everything, will, all three axes will go home and the coolant will turn off. Uh, depending on the control, they have certain uh, uh, protocols as which one of these it will read first. But normally, that coolant off will happen right away. It will turn it off before it comes up. So if you don't have an enclosed machine, you won't get splashed with coolant, hopefully. All right. So now we've got our tool change. Now I'm going to go ahead and just let's make this big here taking a so you see where we're at so here's our one of our tool changes so first off I'm programming an optional stop in there that's a real nice thing because if you want to just run one tool at a time you can push the optional stop button on the control remember an MO, M01 will will be ignored unless that button is pushed so if you want to run full blow and you're not worried about it you, you, you don't push the M01 button or you don't have it lit or toggled or whatever you want to call it and the machine will just pass this up but if you did want to run maybe just one tool you get to a point where you can say okay stop every time you get to a tool maybe you need to check something but it's a good idea to put an optional stop in there again the safety line is exactly the same remember we got our G21 I just copied and pasted this all out went to tool 2 you know uh, MO6 change it spin along forward calculated up my RPM again now this time we have a 7 8 diameter 4 flute end mill all right, I ended up being 420, 524 RPM. Uh, that's the only cool thing about metric. You don't have to convert your RPMs. RPMs are RPMs, no matter if it's metric or English. So that's great. Uh, I believe I was told, uh, I'd have to go back and look, but once I calculated up all the feed, I give you a recommended feed to, per tooth. I did use 120 as my cutting speed. Uh, in the lab, I think it says 325, which is a little too ridiculous. I don't remember why we put it in there like that, but there was a reason we did. So you take your feed per tooth times the number of teeth, which in this case would be four, then take that, answer and multiply it times. Well, there you go. You're going to multiply times your RPM. And we end up with this particular feed right here, okay, which looks really, 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 really like, oh my God, that's fast, okay. Now, at this point, and it's right here, 213. Now, that decimal point has to be there. If you don't put that decimal point in there again, let me make sure that you understand exactly what this control is going to see. This is what it'll see. <laughs> yeah, so that's, and that's of a millimeter. So this thing is not going to move at all. So if you don't put that decimal point in there, it won't move. Oh, you'll see a number change maybe in 15 minutes or something like that. Anyway, for the love of God, remember, no decimal points in the RPM, but decimal points every place else. Okay? All right. So let's go back here. Now, I'm going to get this, move it back over here again, get it backed up there. Okay. So we're at tool number, again, this is tool number two. Because that other one was tool number one. We just lied to it. Remember, gave it D1 and D2. Now, what I've done here is, this time we're using a number tool, different tool, different RPM. We're coming down, same thing, activating our... I've got another little problem right there. Let's fix that. Control S. Okay. Activate my tool length offset. Uh, and uh, 
in a move, it'll wrap it down to four inches above the part. Remember this number, the H2 number always has to be the same as the tool number it has to be. So that number, the H number and the T number have to be the same. Now, I've got all, again, my points. Now let's go over the points again because we had eight out here, remember? So this is nine, I'm over in the print, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So remember, this is nine. So notice what I did is I get it over here and I brought it to my safe spot again. This move to safe location, safe start has to be so that I, ha I can make my move with my G41 that is greater, okay, than the radius of the cutter. That's how it works. So I've got that. Move X over first. So I've got it there. I've figured out that's where that's going to be in millimeters. Okay, now this particular, if you look up here, which I'm on the print again, uh, we see the island is 6.35. That's how tall it is. That's a quarter of an inch. Okay, so what we're going to do is with a 7 8 end mill, if I can't take a quarter inch deep cut, I got a problem. <laughs> Something's wrong. So I'm, I don't have any problem taking that full depth here. All right, uh, I did add 20 thousandths to it, and I end up with instead of 6. Uh, 6.35 oh no actually excuse me I'm actually leaving I believe well, let's take a look because I need to make sure exactly what I got here we're gonna leave stock not only an X and Y just like we did before but I'm also gonna leave stock here in the bottom so if you notice I didn't bring this down 6.35 so let's take uh, six let's real just do this clear I have to do it in 250 thousandths plus I believe 10 is what I left for stock in Z which is usually pretty good and take that times uh, 25.4 and yep nope I must have looks like I uh, let's try that again clear so 0.25 plus 0 0.01 was 260 times 25 point four equals six point zero six four that would be twenty thousand steeper now I don't want it to be twenty thousand steeper or ten yeah I want it to be ten thousand shallow because I want to leave stock so let's try this one more time to so leave stock again this is converting so minus ten thousandths that makes two forty times twenty five point four equals there we go so yeah see I did do that right. Basically what I'm doing is I'm not going down as deep and I'm going to leave stock in both X, Y, and Z on this part. Before I didn't, you know, I didn't have anything out here. You want to leave a little stock here. 10,000 is usually fine. Yeah, it depends. With a, with a 7 8 in mill, I expect very little tool deflection, so 10,000 ought to work out just fine. All right. So that's where I've got that there. So I get to my safe start, safe start you know, here, just like I did before. And we bring Z down. I calculated up my feed. That's what it ended up. Now, notice I got the D2. Now, that D2 is the same D2 that we used up here. You're going, well, that can't be right. No, we cannot use D2 up there. We have to use change this to D3. So, again, I'm going to leave stock. So, what I'm going to do is I will tell the control, and I'll make sure that you understand how to do that here. I'm going to tell control, uh, first off, let's go. We got a seven eighths, that's eight hundred seventy five thousandths. And I want to leave when I leave twenty so plus forty thousandths, that should leave me uh, twenty thousandths per side, plus point zero four. So that's that side right there. Now that then take that of course in times twenty five point four equals 23.241 that's what I would put in the tool geometry page is the diameter for D3 that should leave it I'm gonna double check it though to make sure it's right because hey so first off I 875 great that's let's let's say we had it on size in mill and I want to add leave 20 thousandths per side so plus 40 remember you double it so plus 0 0.04 equals that and then I'm gonna convert that to metric yeah, 23.241. That is the size right there that I would actually put in the tool geometry page for D3. And once it does all these passes, it should work out just fine. Now, again, 
Remember this is 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So we have 24 points here. I highly recommend that you fill out your coordinate sheets, you know, that'll just make life a whole lot easier. Um, so once I brought Z down to my right depth and I comped over using the you know, the lying size actually told it was much bigger than it thought it was. That way it will stay away from it. It'll stay away from it. So I told this that this, basically I said that that, that end mill is actually 40 thousandths bigger than it actually was. So it'll leave stock. And then all my stuff. Now you can do this. This is nothing different than anything that you've done up to this point. I'm not going to go through all these. I got all the points right here. Okay. So... Starting right here, I geo one from there to there, geo one from there to there, two axis move, geo one from there to there. Now this is a geo three to there, okay? Then geo one to there, 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 geo three again, arc counterclockwise, geo one to there, geo one to there, and now we're all the way back down here. I comped off back to my safe spot, comped off first and X, then comped off to Y. And then you'll notice this time now I brought Z all the way down to 6.35, which is what it's supposed to be. So I did bring it down. So this is going to take care of my Z stock. And remember, I left 10,000 stock on this surface over here. I'm over the print. Left 10,000 over here. All right. So having six that 6.35, it's come down, comping over. Now, I got D3 there. The question is, do we need D3 there? Well, actually, I was going to just take this in two passes, all right? So at this particular point, this needs to be a different diameter because was D3 up here, that was the one that gave me the roughing, the lying size, the 40 thousandths bigger than it actually was. This is going to be D4. So I will go into the control now and tell it that the D4 is whatever the actual diameter of the end mill is. Let's say again it was exactly 7 eighths, so that's 0 0.875. We're in metric, you got to convert it times 25.4 equals, yeah, 22.225. So that's what I would put in as the actual diameter for D4. And it would come in, and what, it's going to make all these nice moves. Let's bring it up here so we can see it. It's going to do from here. All the way down to here, and this time it's going to do it with what it thinks, you know, the actual size of the end mill. So that's going to take care of two things. One, it's going to remove the stock that we left in both the X and Y. So all the twenty thousandths that we left over all these surfaces, over all of these surfaces had twenty thousandths extra stock. So it'll take another pass with that, with that uh, seven eighths end mill, and telling it it's on size, so it'll finish up. Also remember, up here I brought this down. And that'll take care of that extra 10,000 that are left here. So that's a really nice, easy way. And again, all I did was copy and paste this stuff. You know, that's all I did was copy and paste. Now, I made the numbers really, uh, really nice and neat. I mean, there was still a couple that kind of ran into me, a couple places there. That always happens. Uh, but I, uh, we don't have NC plot here. You don't have it. You can actually load it at home. Uh, if you're listening to me, go to NC Pop page, download it. It's 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 a really nice little editor and plotting thing. Uh, the NC View works as good, but NC Plot works better. And you get a 15 day, which is actually 15 instances, so you can open it 15 times, and it and uh, for free. After that, you're kind of on your own. You still use NC Viewer. It works fine. I did this with NC View. It worked just great. So once again, I brought that down. That takes care of my Z stock. Then I used D4 here with the, with the actual, honest to God, what size the end mill really was. And it went ahead and does all these moves here. All right. Um, should finish the entire island. Notice again, I went ahead. G28, Z is going up to 4 inches by the part, converted to metric. Everything has to be converted to metric except your RPMs. Got it? Everything. All right. And that's the thing that a lot of people just can't get the grasp of. All right. And it turned that off. So now let's see what we got. Now we're going to go ahead and take a number four center drill. And I'm going to center drill here. 
here, here, here. 21, 22, 23, 24. Now, I didn't point these points down here. Uh, I could if you wanted me to, or if you need to, that's fine. You can put the points on there. I just didn't need to do it. So let's talk about it. We got our safety line again. G21 is always, that's always going to be in there. I just copy and paste this again, change it to tool 3, calculate up my RPM. I told you in the lab to use 70 as a cutting speed. Okay, that's great. So we did that. Come up with a nice, with 1200. Usually that's what I run at 1200, 1250. Uh, for number four center drill and it does say that right there tool change number four center drill okay got that one problem there you can see it is a copy and paste issue there we go so yeah so again activated now this was tool three now let's make sure we want to make sure this one up here is tool two it's very important yeah it's two tool two <laughs> uh, it won't let you do it anyway like i said uh, the hoss will tell you that's an error but so I got tool three, I got tool length offset and tool length offsets are just a way, uh, maybe I should explain that a little better, but what it does is we measure the tools on the machine and then it mathematically makes them all the same length. Okay, that's what it does. And we can actually go into the control and edit those tool length offsets. Let's say 6.35 was shallow a little bit by a couple thousandths. I could change my tool length offset, whatever that number was in the tool geometry page. Go ahead and change that and, you know, take care of that extra three thousandths if I had it or what, what have you. That's another way to do that kind of stuff. I am going to go ahead and put down, we're going to do drill feeds. I'll do a drill feed video here and shortly put that one up too so that everybody understands how to drill feed. So let's talk about what we're going to do here. We got everything going. We got our safety line going. We got the G54 always, all of this. Notice this always maintain your formatting copy and paste whenever possible okay so I move it again to x0 y0 z 2.5 400 thousandths of the part turn that turn the coolant on so it's gonna stop right here it's gonna go to here then I tell it to go to the first hole which is 25 up and 25 over now, if you can't see that here let me make sure you can yeah 25 between it's kind of hard to tell it is it is hard to tell but it's 25 from there to there and it's 25 from there to there so it's 25 by 25 so I went first off you always move whenever you're doing a, a drill can cycle you move into the first hole position before you turn the can cycle on that's very important don't do it afterwards it, it, it won't work it'll try what it'll do is if you put if you don't put that there and you put it down here it'll try and drill a hole right here at x0 y0 that's where it'll try to drill a hole so because it's gonna whatever the move it's right before it okay if that was the move right before it if I had this down there that wouldn't work don't do it any other way do it like this you can watch this video several times that's the neat thing about it you can get back and totally uh, check it out so we go to x25 y25 then we bring in our G81, which is just a standard drill cycle. So again, all of this is done in metric. So I usually, I want 187 thousandths, 3 sixteenths deep with the number four center drill. Uh, once you converted that, I ended up with 4.76 millimeters. I uh, figured up my feed. I usually use two and a half inches per minute. So I converted that and that ended up being 63.5 millimeters per minute. And my retract plan, of course, is 100 thousandths by the part. It always is. So I got it R2.54. Then, what it'll do is it'll drill that first hole, it'll come up 100 thousandths above the part, right up here, and it'll wrap it to the next position, which is this one. Drill that hole, wrap it over to here, drill that hole, wrap it over here, drill that hole. Then, very important, if you turn a can cycle on, you turn a can cycle off. Don't, you're going, well, you turn it off down here, that does not matter, that's just there in case something weird happened, all right? And let it stand by its own. Give your operators a break so they can see that. Because let me tell you what, if you don't turn that off, the very next move this thing makes, it's going to stop and try to drill a hole wherever it goes. If that G81 is still active when it hits that G28 on some older controls, it'll go to the machine home and try to drill a hole there. And God knows what's going to be in the way when it rapids down there and does all that stuff. Hopefully not your hand or your head. But you'll probably end up breaking something. Avoid it. Put the G80 there. Put the G80 there. Let the G80 stand alone. You don't need to put it on extra lines, okay? Then finally, again, we got a nice G28. 
which of course Z is first going to go up to 101.4 or 4 inches above the part. Then all three axes will go home as fast as they can go rapid and we're turning the coolant off. Alright, so what I did at this point is I just copy and pasted this entire section right here for my next tool. Now I'll go over here, copied it, and pasted it right here. Now the only thing I did to change was, of course, guess what, tool numbers. Well, 4, H4, okay? But that's, and of course now, this time, we're going to be using, I believe, yes, these are half inch holes, 12.7. Uh, so I'm going to use a quarter inch drill, which is 6.35 millimeters. Let's just put that in there, huh? There you go. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So I put a 6.35 millimeter drill. So I'm going to basically, I'm going to rough these holes out. So change that tool, calculated up this 70 times 3.2, 3.82 divided by uh, 0.25 equals the RPM. That's all you have to do. Remember RPMs, there's no such thing as metric RPMs. RPMs are RPMs, English are metric, they're the same. Okay, so once I get that into position, again, I call my tool length offset, like always. Remember the H number has to match the tool number. Very good, okay. Got that going. Got this right here, you can see it. there's that again. Get rid of that, okay. A lot of controls that may not pro give it a problem to some controls, I can guarantee it will. Now, again, I brought this to X0, Y0, and Z, 2.54 millimeters. So it's going to right here over on the print, 100 thousandths of the part. Now, you could put, like I said, a block skip thing in there if you didn't want it to do that every time, which is just simply one of these. Uh, I'm looking at my, right like that. And you hit the block skip button on the control, and it'll ignore that move. So it'll go right to the first hole. Most people find that really useful for setup. That way you're just checking your X, Y, and Z zero, but other people don't like it. Uh, if you know, if I were doing 500 parts, I definitely would put that block delete button up in there and hit the block delete, or the block delete sign, and you know, so block skip, block delete. There's a lot of different names for it, depending on the control. All of these positions are the same. Okay, so I didn't change anything. Remember again, we first move and we're, we wrap it in to, all right, we wrap it to the first position of this first hole, which was 21, all right? Now, this time I'm using a G83. Now, G83 is another type of drill cycle. This is called a peck drill cycle. Look over here, peck drill cycle, yeah. So what it'll do is, it's going to go down to 27.82. Now, how did you figure up that? Well, the part is 25.4. So let's try that real quick. So I'm using a 250 thousandths. So how long is the tip? Because this has got to go all the way through. So take that times 0.3 with a standard 118 degree uh, uh, drill. Whenever you do that, that'll tell you how long the drill point is. Then I just added that to one and that would barely break through. And I go, okay, so what if I want a little more? How about one inch and one inch and 90 thousandths ought to be fine, clear. So. 1 inch and 90 will get me all the way through that. Convert it to metric. Let's see if that's what I did. I can't remember exactly. 27.8682. I went a little further than that. Okay, not a whole lot further than that, but I did go deeper than I had to go. It's always a good idea to go a little deeper, you know. Uh, all right, so clear that out. So that's my Z depth right there. The feed. Now the feed's pretty simple. I will do a drill feed calculations video here very shortly, but basically the rule of thumb is for every eighth inch of drill diameter, you're going to use two thousandths per revolution feed. So let's put in 0.25 because that's what we're using. Okay, divide that by 0.125. That's the uh, decimal equivalency of an eighth inch. Guess what? There's two eighths and a quarter. Oh my God, really? Then we take that times 0 0.002, and you already go, well, that's four thousandths. Then you take that and multiply it times the RPM, which in this case the RPM was 1,070, 4.28, right? Now that's 4.28 is again, okay, that's inches per minute. I notice I got 4.28 right there. That isn't going to work because that is in inches per minute. If you go 4.28 millimeters per minute, you're going to take a damn long time to <laughs> uh, drill this hole. So take that times... 25.4, boom, got 108.7, so we're going to go down here, 
108.7. There's my feed. Hit Control S, save that. So now I got my feed. Remember that's millimeters per minute. It looks really fast, but remember a millimeter is a lot smaller <laughs> than an inch. All right, this Q value is something we haven't talked a whole lot about, maybe a little bit, but this Q value is actually the peck amount. I think I believe I said peck every, I'm, I'm gonna guess 30 thousandths, I don't know. We can come up with exactly what that is real quick here, because I got a Q of 1.27, 1.27, divided by 25.4, so my peck dab was 50 thousandths. So that means that every time this is going to go down 50 thousandths, then wrap it back out 100 thousandths by the part, then go down 50 thousandths more. Now, there's a whole lots of different formulas out there for determining the optimal peck depth for the diameter and things like that. Uh, you know, again, experience and stuff plays in that. 50 thousandths isn't, I could have probably gone 100 thousandths real easy. You know, if I wanted to, heck, I'll just change it. So let's just go 0.1 times 25.4 equals 2.4. You knew that, Randall. <laughs> 2.54. So 2.54. Now, basically, what it would do, okay, it's going to go 100 thousandths and wrap it back out to 100 thousandths by the part. That's my retract plane right there. And there's where it's going to do it. So each time it'll drill 120. 100 thousandths. You could probably make that 130 and maybe even 150. Uh, you know, it depends on the length of the drill, rigidity of the setup. There's just a lot of things involved in there. But that's what that Q value is. So a G83 is a PEC drill cycle. The only thing that's different in it is the Q. The Q is, you know, that's the only thing that we have to add. The G83 instead of the G81 and add a Q value, which is always going to be your PEC amount. Okay. Then we drill all our holes. Yay. Drilled all my holes. Canceled the can cycle. Remember, if you turn it on, you turn it off. You turn it on, you turn it off. I'm going to say it one more time. You turn the damn thing on, you turn it off. Do not count on this to do it. It won't. It will if it's left, but it's going to do some weird stuff. So then we got our good old G28, which means these first going to wrap it up to four inches above the part. The coolant will turn off at some point. Hopefully, it turns off before it gets too high. And then all three axes will go home at the rapid. We're ready for another tool change. So, again, I just copied and pasted. Copied and pasted. What I need now, I'm going to take it. I'm going to drill it out to 12.7. So, that was tool 4. So, this is tool 5. Change that. H5. Calculate up my RPM. You know, that's very good. Since I have already, okay, Peck this out. I can take a half inch drill down through there, remove an eighth inch per side. I'm just going to use another standard drill cycle. If you wanted to, you could change that to a GA3, give you a peck amount, but you really don't need to do it. Not in this case, I don't think. Some people may argue about it, you know, whatever. Calculated up my feed for that particular drill. I'll do that again here for you. So we ended up going uh, 4.76. Now you're going 4.76. Is that right? No, it's not right, because remember I told you I haven't done the depth yet, so I was doing that so you could see how we do it. So let's do that once again. So let's say that I want this thing to be, oh, let's calculate all this up. So we got a 0 0.5, that's the time, times 0.3, so that right there is the length of it, 150 thousandths long. Let's say we'll go 200, or er, uh, we'll make it 170. That'll be 20 thousandths. That should be good enough. So I'm just going to take one inch because that's how thick the part is. One plus 0.17 equals, okay, there is my depth. And times, because remember, we got to convert it, 25.4. Yeah, so this is going to be minus 29. And I think it was 29.78. I'll check it out. 29.78. Let's double check. 29718. Okay. All right. I'll just put the one right there then. There we go. Control S. Okay. Notice since this is a standard, you know, we have our feed. Let's calculate up that feed. Show you how I did that again. Clear this out. So once again, two thousandths revolution feed for every eighth inch of drill diameter. So I'll take 0.5 divided by 0.125, which is the decimal equivalency of an eighth of an inch equals four. So that's four eighths and a half inch. Ooh, surprise. 
times 0 0.002. You can get this in your head by now. That's eight thousandths. Then multiply that times my calculated RPM, which is 535 times 535 equals this 4.28. Now let's double check that feed here. What do we got? Okay. And then I want to convert that to metric times 25.4 equals yeah, 108. Okay, so that looks like that's a little different. I'm going to check that one more time. Let's try that again. So we know it was 8 thousandths, but I'll just do that again. 0.5 divided by 0.125 equals that times 0 0.002 equals 8 thousandths. So 8 thousandths for revolution, so every time this drill bit goes around once, then multiply it times 535, and I equal 4.28. That's what I equal up with my, okay? Now, that is inches per minute, so I want to take it and multiply it times 25.4 and equal 101.8. So let's go back down here. Yep, that feed's not right. Okay, so it's 101.108.7. Yeah, that'll be fine. 108.7. Control S and save that. Remember, move it into position, the first hole, then call your G81. Put all your other positions in there. Don't forget your G80. Then machine, then it goes home, and life's good. Now, I'm going to take a little break here, and I should be right back. Once we've gone ahead and we've done our that G81 where we actually did the... Uh, the standard drill again and we went ahead and put the G80 on there remember that to cancel it brought it home went into a tool change so everything should be pretty good there the last thing we're going to do here is we're using a 5 8 90 degree countersink we're going to countersink these holes uh, so basically again I just copied and pasted everything and put it right down here that's a little extra line there that we don't need control s all right so, optional stop as always, got the same safety line, tool 6 this time, calculated up the RPM, this time I used a 535 again. Now, I'm looking at that going, that, you know what, calculating RPMs for countersinks, usually you're supposed to run them like one third the normal. Uh, I just left it at 535 because that actually wasn't a bad, wasn't a bad uh, RPM to leave it all. Went ahead and calculated, uh, you know, I got my Z move in here. There we go. And uh, activated my tool length offset. Moved X0, Y0, Z2.54, turned the coolant on, then moved into position. Again, this was all copy and pasted. Now, the only difference that we got here is this time I'm using a G82. Now, that's a drill with the well. Over here it says right here, drill with the well cycle. Okay, so there's a couple different things going on with the G82. I know some have used it, some people haven't. Uh, first off, what the big difference is is this P. Okay, so this is the amount of dwell time. In other words, when it reaches its Z depth of 6.75 millimeters, okay, once it reaches that Z depth, it's going to stay there rotating at 535 RPM for one second. Now, this is in milliseconds, so yes, that is one second. So if you wanted a second and a half, it'd be, um, you just put a five here, that'd be a second and a half, et cetera, et cetera. No decimal point, except, you know, again, there's calculations so you can figure out exactly what that amount needs to be for one complete revolution. You need your countersink to go around one complete revolution or you end up with half a countersink on your hole, which looks really stupid. It'll go down, hit depth, and wrap it right back out, and you'll end up with half a countersink. So that's, remember, if you're countersinking, a G82 is required, Okay. Uh, I figured up my feed, uh, got 63.5, because I believe I give you a, let's see here, I think if I look in there, sure, I actually looked at it and says, yeah, using a, yeah, uh, feed is 63.5, it's right there, sorry that you have to see it, there's no way I can get that to do otherwise, uh, so, that's what I went, and 300 RPM, I said 300, so let's just change that to 300, since that's what I put in there, control S. Uh, RPMs on countersinks are sort of, again, a uh, sort of a, a judgment call. Uh, 
I just always, I was always taught to run countersinks as slow as the machine would go on a manual machine. So typically I run them pretty slow. Uh, it depends on the style of countersink too, and I don't even want to get into all of these. Now, since this is a, a uh, 90 degree countersink, that's what I got here, 90 degree. That means it has an included angle of 90 degrees. What did I say? How much countersink did I say I wanted you to put on this hole? Okay. Okay, mm, to a diameter of 13.5 millimeters. That's what I wanted to put on that. I'm sorry, I have to read that sideways. You have to trust me. So these are 12.7, you know, plus or minus a couple thousandths of an inch, depending on how properly the drill was uh, ground. Anyway, we're on a 13.5. So let's talk about how we come up with countersink depths. This is something else I'll put up a little video on how to do calculate calculate 90 degree countersink depths. Remember there are sta different standard included angles for countersinks. Uh, the most popular being 90, 82, then there's 100, and then there's 110. I believe that's an aircraft countersink. I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, those would be most of it the, out there. Rarely will you find a 60 degree, but I'm not going to say it's out there, not out there. Maybe one to 30 degree chamfer per side. So let's clear this all out. And I said I wanted the 13.5. Since it's a 90 degree countersink, it means I got 45 degrees per side. Basically on this, whatever the diameter of the countersink that you want to have, and that's the countersink. Remember, a countersink is a tool that produces a part uh, feature that's called a countersink. I'm sorry, I didn't come up with the damn terminology, but that's what it's called. So if we want a 13.5, all you have to do is take 13.5, because that's already in metric. I gave that to you there. And divide it by 2. 6.75. That's how deep we want to go. Remember, with a 90 degree countersink, whatever the diameter of the countersink that you need on the hole, not the countersink of the tool itself, but on the hole, just divide that by 2, and that's your Z depth. If you look here, G82, okay, that's another drill with the well, right? So I went down 6.75 millimeters at 63.5, which I gave you that. Uh, I believe I just kind of arbitrarily come up with that. Uh, again, feeds for countersink. I would never go more than three thousandths per revolution on a countersink. The dwell, again, the P is the difference in there, that P1000, without a decimal point, no decimal point, please. That's going to tell it how long for it to stay down there. Then, like I said, we brought it into the position of the first hole, called G82, second hole, third hole, or fourth hole, canceled it, G28, it Z goes back up to 101.4 millimeters above the part, turns coolant off, then the whole thing goes home. Yay for us. And finally, our good old M30. Now, notice here I got a prob problem there. That counter, that percent sign needs to be there. M30 does a lot of different things. It will also turn off the coolant, it'll turn off the spindle, it'll do a whole lots of things. Some people actually, you know, I don't understand this, but some like people actually put a tool change on the end of this. Uh, like another T01 M06 right here. Now, if you had a great big gigantic uh, tool changer that had maybe like a 500 tool magazine, and trust me, they do have them that big, it would be in your best interest to probably, you might put T1 M30 here. And what it'll do is it'll cue the tool cool up. It'll, it won't change it, but it'll, it'll, while everything else is going and you're doing taking things apart, the tool changer will move around to while tool one is ready to be put into the spindle. It won't put it in there to put the M06, but a lot of times it'll do that. That's just an I'm thought. Of course, I'm into program flag, which is very important here. I'll hit control S, make sure I got all that saved. That should work. Now, I'm going to do this one more time here. Go ahead and maximize it. Go all the way up and show you what all we got going here. So, five tools, we've got yeah, two end mills, a center drill, a step drill, an on-size drill, and finally a countersink. All right, getting closer to being a realistic part. This part would actually run. Uh, maybe again, like I said, the program's not as optimized as it wants to be, uh, but using the diameter offset method, we can leave stock simply, and then all we have to do is copy and paste. 
once you get decent with this, because everything takes practice, but once you get decent at this, you can pop these suckers out pretty quick. Now I have, you know, I'm working from home here, which is total blast. <laughs> it's not, because I also have to take care of a crippled child at the same damn time, so <sighs> double my pleasure. All right. Well, okay, everybody. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Wash your hands. And uh, I'll see you at Mill Lab number five. Bye.